Hello, welcome back to The Hand Toolery. I'm Andrew Malesi and, whew, man. I am exhausted. I'm doing the intro at the end, which is norm, I mean, it's standard operating procedure in a lot of ways, but I'm gonna show you around the shop and see why I'm so, you'll be able to see why I'm so exhausted. I just spent a good three, maybe four hours sawing through all the components I'm gonna need for the main case of this sideboard. And let me tell you, I am exhausted, I'm tired. I'm just so glad that this part is over with. We've got a huge stack of components over here uh, to my left here. I've got a bunch of shavings from clearing off the boards. I've got a bunch of sawdust. Long story short is, I am ready to make some serious progress on this thing. I'm gonna start cutting some joints soon. And uh, I'm really excited. But first, you're going to see me lay out and try to make the best use of all the boards that I've got, uh, working with and around knots and defects and things like that. And uh, in the end, you can tell me what you think of my design decisions, and hopefully you like them. I know I'm really satisfied with them. I've got enough wood and some left over to uh, do everything I needed. All that's left at this point is some internal structural components and uh, the back panels that will button everything up as far as sawing. My sawing, though, isn't over. I've still got to uh, do some more. I'll tell you about that at the end of the video. So stick around to the end. I'll see you in a second. All right, so here is your fair warning. This video is going to be a ton of sawing. Some hand planing and then a ton of sawing. So if this doesn't interest you, just letting you know. But basically, I'm showing you what I do to get all my boards processed. And it begins right here just by giving a quick you might call it a skip planing or just a once over with the scrub plane. It doesn't matter. I just want to see what the grain is and if it's doing anything weird or anything really cool. And so however I have to do that going with or against or across the grain, I just use my scrub plane and I don't even worry about getting it flat because as I process this and break it down into the particular pieces I need for the sideboard, then I will take each piece individually, square it up, use the winding sticks, use my joiners, planes and whatnot and I will just make sure that each individual piece is ready to go and is true. So I'm not going to worry about the board in and of itself. I'm just going to make sure I make the pieces large enough to be able to remove stock and get them all trued up. I can't say exactly how long it took me, but this one clip, which I'm not really going to cut until I get very close to the end, this one clip gives you a really good idea of just how long it takes me to surface plane it real quick just to reveal the grain. This clip itself is about 50 seconds long, so I'd say each side, if it works really well and goes quick, one to two minutes per side, just like I said, to see what the grain's like using a scrub plane. I know I've talked about this in other videos, but you might be wondering why I'm scrub planing with the grain and not across the grain. And that's because I just want to take a shallow pass. If I were wanting to remove a lot more material, I would go across the grain. And you can't take really, really deep passes with the grain with the scrub plane. It just gets to be too much to remove at once. That said, you will be surprised at just how deep of a cut you can take with a really sharp iron and everything tuned up right. And here's the result of, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour of work tops. I've got a number of boards here. Most of them are just over 50 inches, and then a select few of them are like 55 to 56 inches. And basically from here, I'm just working from the plans and the layout instructions I've made for myself. I have all the pieces that I'll need. I've even, I've got their lengths, including the, the tenons. And right here, I've even drawn little diagrams of how I wanna cut out the different components. All of this is based on this SketchUp file that I made for myself. Okay, I'm here trying to figure out what exactly I want to do with all these boards. And uh, some of the design issues I have are that I want grain to flow and things like that. So I want the grain to be continuous across the drawers. Of course, I want a nice piece there. I like to get these three pieces, the horizontal. 
uh, on the, the horizontal ones on the front to be the same board. Not sure that's going to happen. Uh, I have, because that's three inches, two inches, and then one inch, and uh, you have to account for maybe a half inch of cutting and planing for each gap, maybe, because it'll be like an eighth inch plus another, I don't know, eighth inch on each board of planing. So that's three eighths, which is, you know, almost a half inch. So you need three, so I mean, anyways, you need another inch, I'd say, just that. So you need seven inches wide, just here. And it had to be clear, good stock, because you don't want it to uh, have any knots to compromise the structure. So easier than, and then also the other thing is it has to be quite long. These are 52 and a half inch runs there, and then with the tenon on each side, we're talking 54 plus. So there's certain boards that just will not work for this. So I have to be mindful of not cutting up my longer boards. Then I have the side panels here that are I'm going to book match, but I would like to have them to look like to have pretty straight enough grain to look like it's flowing to the top a little bit. And I've decided to maybe use uh, uh, one of my straighter boards for that, but I'm not sure what to do yet. So I'm going to show you. Uh, so what I'm thinking, one other thing is that I have this five inch board on the side, then a two and a two, so that's nine inches, so I'll need 10, basically 10 inches wide. But I, this one here doesn't have to be so uh, perfect. They can be shorter, it can just be a section out of the middle of the board. And I was thinking, I want these two to be pretty straight, but this one I have a piece that's figured where it's right around where a tree limb was coming out. So it's cool because it would kind of have like this curve effect right in the middle. So I'm thinking of using that on either side because I have uh, I have pieces that came from the same log. So so that's what I'm trying to figure out here, but prioritizing these long runs here. I'd like to have, like I said, well, I need long runs here. And then this one, I'd like to have the grain be continuous, but if I have to break it up, that actually does give me a little bit more latitude. And so now I begin laying out my components. And this is just one of those rulers like you can get at Lowe's or something. This is actually really old as far as I know. It was in my shop when I moved in. But I like it because you can measure and draw a straight line on it as long as it is straight. You can pick one out for like a buck. And then if you want, you can take a joiner plane or something to it and make sure it's straight. And as you can see, I'm using the ruler itself as a straight edge and as a 90 degree uh, square using the corner there to gauge 90 degrees off the line I just drew. And this is how I'm going about laying out the drawer fronts or the different pieces for my sideboard. Now this edge here I'm sure isn't perfect, but I did put my straight edge against it and it's close enough, especially for what I'm doing. And again, I'm just constantly referring back to my notes, my cut list, making check marks when I've got something laid out using a different combination of different measuring tools and straight edges just to make sure that I have everything I need and leaving myself a little bit extra room. And I leave myself, like for each piece, I leave about a quarter to a half inch extra room to be able to mill it up and get it all squared. These are just some of the things you're going to want to consider as you're laying out all your components for your piece of furniture. In particular, if you have something that is going to show, you want to have the particular grain showing for that piece. If it's going to be structural, you don't want to have like a huge knot that goes the whole way through that could come loose and compromise the structure. Um, for me, I wanted to have book matching on some parts. I wanted the rails to be sequential if possible. And so I was thinking about all these things, keeping them in mind as I was laying everything out. And one more thing I want to show you before I move on to all the cutting and processing of these pieces that I'm marking out is that here, as you can see, I'm using my straight edge. This is just a piece of wood that I've got nice and true, but I prefer this in a lot of ways just because I know it's really true. But because it doesn't have the measurements on it, it's a little bit less convenient because of the fact that I have to use different measuring devices with it. But it's up to you. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. And now we begin the really, really long process of processing all this lumber and cutting out all the components and like I said I left a lot of room for them for each individual component so I'm trying to saw pretty close to the line but also that way if my saw drifts or if I get tired and I make a mistake it's not gonna kill me so I'm giving myself some room but also trying to keep it accurate and this is just basically all comes down to form and concentration
In total, I can't even begin to tell you how many pieces I sawed through or how many total linear feet I sawed, but it was a lot. In the dozens of linear feet, maybe over a hundred. And if you ever find yourself in the middle of a sawing marathon like this, my advice to you is just to take it slow and steady, break it up across a couple sessions, even a couple days, which is what I did. Ten minutes exactly. Exactly. I took my time on that one. Really wanted to cut on the line because it's my drawer front. I had a mismeasurement, so I had to strike the new line. Left a note to myself. Really happy with that. Okay, so you've seen me use my straight edge and rulers and tape measures and square all that and all that to lay out some parts, and I've gone back and forth. But the most important thing is that I got in second opinion. Uh, I talked to my wife, and while I thought initially maybe this would be really cool to have all this figured grain as a side panel, I even marked it as side panel too. You can see right here. Um, we decided in the end that I would actually just use some of the straighter grain here because I really don't need uh, a whole lot of it anymore. I don't need to conserve it. So I initially thought I would use this to conserve some of the grain and in the end, I don't need so much of it because I've already got all my pieces laid out. So I'm gonna keep this as a panel and then I'm gonna use another straight section below it as a panel. However, since I have a crack right here and then I have a knot, three knots right here, I'm gonna divide the panel. It's gonna be divided anyways into this larger panel and this smaller panel, but either way, I thought it would look good and it's the grain is rather continuous, so. That's what I'm gonna end up doing. So I'm going to cut it here and then um, and then resaw this all. Here's my first side panel that I'm going to resaw, minus this. I'm going to try and resaw in a way that maximizes the, the amount I can actually preserve in the offcuts.
One other technique I like to use when I'm sawing a lot is just to clamp it in the vise and go like that. Sometimes it's even more comfortable for me. I love using the saw bench, but after a while my knee gets tired, my back gets tired, and sometimes I find I can just do this just as well, and it's a great alternative. So I basically just go back and forth between my bench and my vise. So there it was, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. I know it was a lot of planing and sawing and I don't know, me talking I guess, and maybe that bores you, hopefully it doesn't. But in any case, let me tell you, uh, I still have a little bit, well, that's an, that's an understatement. I got quite a bit of sawing left to do and it's not, you know, uh, it's not rough sawing. I think uh, Chris Schwartz mentioned that there are a couple different classes of sawing, but it's not the rough cloth. It's not the rough class. Uh, I'm actually gonna have to do a lot of resawing, and I don't have any better way to do it than just by using my rip saw that you saw me using. I'm just gonna make sure the teeth are good and sharp and do my best. The best, the good thing is though that I don't really have to do it extremely precise. A lot of it's gonna be not seen, it'll be on the back. And then it'll be on the side panels because it's frame and panel construction. So yeah, I think it'll be okay. I'm really excited, like I said, just to get the case built or the carcass or whatnot. Uh, and then we'll see as time permits and as my uh, motivation goes up or down, I will resaw those panels as needed. But I think what I'm going to do is I'll just do one thing one day, wait another day and do another thing, just slowly plan it out, you know, as I have time. It's kind of you just... Shut your mind off once you get all your lines ready to go and you know what you're going to do. And once you sort of get in the groove, you just, yeah, you just saw. If I just need to shut my mind off after a long day at work, maybe I'll just resaw some panels. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, thanks so much for sticking around and for uh, watching. I hope it was enjoyable and useful. And I'll see you around here for the next one.